Well, hello again. We are, uh, today is March 11th, and we are in the book of Mark, New Testament, of course, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 27. And here it reads, And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a wall around it, and dug a vat under the wine wine press and built a tower and rented it out to vine growers and went on a journey. At the harvest time, he sent a slave to the vine growers in order to receive some of the produce of the vineyard from the wine, vine growers. They took him and beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent them another slave and they wounded him in the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another and that one they kill, and so with with many others beating beating some of the killing beating some and killing others, he had one more to send a beloved son. He sent him last of all to them, saying, "They will respect my son, but those vine growers said to one another, "This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours." They took him and killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the vine growers and will give the vine vineyard to others. Have you not even read this scripture? This to me is a reflection of of the the children of Israel uh, and, you know, how God blessed them to be his people and yet they, uh, you know, killed the, the, the prophets that were there to instruct them and then of course killed Christ the son of God uh, continuing on uh, here at here at verse 10 it says have you not even read the scripture the stone which the builders rejected this this became the chief cornerstone again that's Christ this came about from the Lord and it is marvelous in our eyes and they were seeking to seize him, and yet they feared the people, for they they understood that he spoke the parable against them. And so they left him and went away. Then they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to him in order to trap him in a statement. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and defer to no one, for you are not partial to any, but teach the way of the God of God in truth. So they really, truly know and understand at least some uh, who Christ must be. And they are just truly power hungry evildoers, (laughs) to to keep it plain and simple. Uh, Continuing, it is, is it lawful to pay a poll tax to Caesar or not? Shall we pay or shall we not pay? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were amazed at him. So, yeah, Jesus really uh, (laughs) pushes them back every time. But, you know... um, what we owe to God is what is his and the things that are man's and all that stuff and the rules and regulations, the authorities that God put in, put in place, uh, whatever is theirs, we, we give to them just to keep it simple. Uh, continuing with verse 18, some Sadducees who say that there is no resurrection came to Jesus and began questioning him saying, teacher, Moses wrote for us, that if a man's brother dies and leaves behind a wife and leaves no child, his brother shall marry, should marry and the wife and the, raise up children to his brother. There were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died, leaving no children. The second one married her and died, leaving behind no children. And the third likewise. And so all seven left no children. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, when they rise again, which one's wife shall should she will she be? For all seven had married her. Jesus said to them, "Is this not the reason you are 
mistaken that you do not understand the scriptures or the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they're neither married nor given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the fact that the dead rise again, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the burning bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly mistaken. Again, Christ puts them in their place. And of course, they're always trying to be slick anyway. So anyway, uh, that's the end for March 11th. Thank you. God bless. And I hope to see you soon.